Okay, like I said in the review, I did kind of like the whole conspiracy theory thing. But why is it almost always, no, Lee Harvey Oswald was working for this or that organization, rather than, no, it wasn't freaking Lee Harvey Oswald. Honestly, other than Zoolander, I'm not sure I can really think of a movie that really insisted that, no, it's clearly someone else other than JFK. And, hey, Oliver Stone has to hit on an actual accurate historical detail sooner or later in one of his historical films, right? I guess we are supposed to take it as that she actually did love the German arachnologist, but I do think it could have been a l but I do think it could have been a little clearer. I mean, at what point did she decide that she would just pretend to kill the Russian president? Did she marry an arachnologist because she could then use that venom and then later fall in love with him? Or did she just fall in love and it happened to be an arachnologist and she found out that the venom could make him appear dead? I mean, if she actually married the guy just to get the venom, honestly, read a book and then go to a zoo or something. I like the whole KA training system idea with the sleeper cells and all, but then there's a bunch of them together on a rusty old boat and they all speak with a very distinct Russian accent and don't look American at all even though we were told that they learned American before they learned Russian that was just stupid and yet the sequence of her killing them all was quite cool one of the handful of instances in this where the action really was pretty good when we see the girl who isn't actually the real original Evan when we see the girl who isn't actually the real original Evelyn Salt but the Russian agent at age 11 and she has the bandages from her recovering from plastic surgery am I the only one who thought that maybe the lips were what needed the most work I quite like the sequence where we see her trying to hide in the crowd and then Schreiber tries to scan the crowd and see if he can spot her and then we think he's seen her and then the camera reveals that oh it was just someone who sort of looked like her he hadn't really seen her unfortunately that lost all its effect once you knew that he was one of them too I liked him a lot in this film and it didn't really bother me that he turned out to be one of them but it just like I said in the review left us without anything to really hang on to as, well, that's at least a certainty. I actually thought that it was going to turn out to be the president who had been replaced. Then again, they never did show him whistle. I guess they picked Schreiber because they were really tired of his talk show, wanted to kill two birds with one stone. The strangling of Schreiber at the end was really cool, especially because the way she positioned herself, they couldn't stop her. You know, if she had just wrapped it around his neck, they could have just pulled her back. The improvised explosive was also really cool, but I personally really wanted to find out what she made it of. Just like a line, she must have made it of this or that. Or seeing what she put together, something. It was cool that she made it and then jumped through the little opening in the door that they had made to throw in a grenade. And I really do like the detail that if you follow it closely, you'll notice she never kills an American. The only people she kills are KA agents. In the car chasing sequence, did anybody else notice how the cars went back and forth between having plenty of room to drive fast and having really long car pileups whenever the script needed it? She was on top of the truck and the truck was going pretty fast, and then suddenly the truck driver notices her, yanks on the brake. For some reason he doesn't get out and check up on her after she falls down, but then immediately after she's fallen down, the cars are moving slowly, and there are long lines. I'm also not entirely sure what caused that crash, I think it sort of was. Not the one with the police car with the tasered cop on top of the cabs. But there was another one that sort of seemed like a crash or cars had stopped or something. Maybe I got it when I saw it, but 
I very quickly forgot. And that's not really a good thing for a relatively simple action flick. When she was jumping down through the elevator shaft, I think it was the person right next to me or one seat over literally said, Spider-Man. And yeah, it kind of was. I mean, again, that's the kind of thing that maybe would have worked really well in kind of kind of stylized approach. Again, that's the thing. Again, that's the kind of thing that maybe would have worked well with a stylized approach. But with a realistic approach, it just looks dumb. And why doesn't she just use some equipment? I mean, have her rappel down the elevator shaft. That would have been better. It was especially bad when she, like, put her hands to the wall and then slid down. That really didn't look like she would just walk away from that. The suicide bombing dude there was also kind of dumb. Okay, I get that they were trying to provoke her, force her into actually going through with the mission because they didn't think she was going to, but how did it help their mission to reveal that Evelyn Salt was going to do it while she was still in the building? At least wait until she's out of the CIA building. I mean, that just forced... I mean, that just meant that they had to have that sequence of her trying to flee and then over and over we see the super futuristic blast doors shut right in front of her but oh she still has some room to move around that went on for way too long some people see the ending as sequel bait I don't really agree I think it's just saying that ah she will get the rest of the KA guys which I really don't buy because sooner or later they would pick up on wait Evelyn Salt is the only one who's surviving all of these meetings between KA agents. Also, maybe it's just me, but didn't Orlov tell her that she was the best of the best or something? And then Schreiber says he was a class above, so he's even better. What do the rest of them do anyway? I mean, they have one so high up that he can launch nuclear missiles at the enemies of the United States. What is above that, or at least equal to it, and why hasn't that been done already? It was really lame how every single disguise was basically just colored contact lenses, dyed hair, a hat, and maybe some clothing. You know, one or more of those things. I get that she can't put on a fake mustache, and maybe it isn't a bad thing that she only wears a fake rubber mask once in the film, but still, have her cover up her looks just a little bit more. I mean, did she even change her hairstyles? Did she? Ah, crap. I'm totally validating that whole joke about, did you do something to your hair, aren't I? I also don't personally love the sort of wall walking moves in some of the fights. I think at least twice Salt does that. Just, you know, jump towards the wall, kick off it, and then kick or something. Maybe also because it doesn't seem like she needed to go towards the wall. It's not like she was being forced towards the wall and then had to kick away or something. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Salt. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.